for, for several days. Thanks for joining us at five. I'm Ken Rice. And I'm Christine Sorensen. The gunfire on Broad Street has long since ended, but the disbelief coming from neighbors is loud and clear. Erica Moke spoke to those neighbors and got an up-close look at that damage. Erica. Christine and Ken, yeah, yesterday we were telling you just the amount of gunfire that was exchanged yesterday, and you were able to see in that video the damage left behind at that row house showing you just how intense this standoff was. You can see behind me that home has since been boarded up. But right now on this street, you can see neighbors are out and about. They are alongside city leaders assessing the damage from those bullets, like what you can see right here on this house, evidence of bullets whizzing by. Neighbors tell me yesterday they felt like they were in the middle of a war zone brought on by a man that they barely knew. Good morning, sir. How's your day? And he was telling me that they're going to pay for this. I'm like, good. I said, it'll be on the street. It's cool. He said, you'll see. And he walked away. That man who lives just a few doors down says he had no idea that just days after that conversation with William Hardison, he turned what's been described as a normal, quiet neighborhood into a nightmare. I couldn't even count. It had to be over 2,000 rounds coming and going. Please him, please him. They were so loud, you would have thought it was a bomb. City officials and police giving an update today on the response, saying their attempts to make contact that was the shooter. and bring the situation to a peaceful end were met either by silence or that barrage of bullets. The gunfire, the exchange of gunfire was, there, uh, there was a, a thousands of gunfire. I just couldn't tell you the number. The exact amount of shots, ammunition, even weapons used by the suspect is still under investigation by state police. And although neighbors say they had no idea what kind of stockpile Hardison may have been sitting on, one says she did see him with a gun case, which she says contained more than one rifle. Because it was heavy. He was struggling from, next, from across the street to his house to get it into his house. His house, the one he refused to leave, now left battered from a gun battle, as are the homes nearby including the one that shares a wall with the now crime scene. Our camera was invited inside, capturing several bullet holes in that shared wall, one big enough to see right through. It was a dramatic scene. I didn't never think it would have got to this point. Now, it is still not known where the shot that killed the suspect came from. Again, that's still under investigation. The neighbor who lives immediately next door didn't want to go on camera. She said that there are at least four bullet holes in her wall, and any of them could have killed her. Thankfully, though, she evacuated, and she and her pets are okay. We're live tonight in Garfield. Erica Moke, KDKA TV News. Erica, thanks. Today, Pittsburgh Mayor Ed Ganey told reporters he knows the suspect, William Hardison's family. That's a I can say that nobody here wanted the events from yesterday to end in the results that it ended in. Nobody did. We also want to make sure we understand that he was a father, son, and a veteran who served our country. There's been a lot of speculation about my relationship with Mr. Hardison, and I want to clear it up to everybody. I do know members of his family. A lot of his family members I grew up with. So I do know members of the family. I do not know him. The mayor said he has spoken with some of those family members and offered his condolences. And while no one in the community was hurt, there is a lot of damage in Garfield to homes and cars as well. The question now, who pays for the repairs? Here's what KDKA's Ross Gadotti has learned. The exchange of gunfire between Pittsburgh police and alleged suspect Bill Hardison resulted in thousands of rounds fired many of them hitting and doing costly damage to cars and homes close to where Hardison was holed up. Now, if you think your homeowner's policy is guaranteed to cover up these kinds of repairs, think again. For most Americans, it's uh, the biggest asset they own, uh, and there's not really a good way to protect it against something like this. Meanwhile, according to the Insurance Information Institute, some homeowners insurance companies will go after the policy of the homeowner the police were trying to capture. But if that policy is lapsed or that individual is dead, generally the homeowners are gonna be out of luck. So what would be the next step? Pittsburgh Mayor Ed Ganey addressed that exact issue today. We are also urging residents to contact their insurance carriers 
and the city will assist you with your deductibles. If you do not have the insurance, the city will cover the damage fully. Now, if your home was damaged in the incident, please wow, check out KDK.com's Seen On section for more Way information to go, Pittsburgh. on how you can get a claim form. In Pittsburgh, Ross Gadotti, KDK TV News. And our coverage does not stop here. Coming up at 5.30, William Hardison claimed to be a sovereign citizen, refusing to recognize the authority of police officers. What exactly does that entail? KDK lead investigator Andy Sheehan has spent the day working to learn more. Plus, the impact the incident had on businesses in Garfield. We have those stories coming up at 5.30.